All right, go grab a if it's... Yep. All right. Hi, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and the FedEx truck has just pulled up. I think this is my kind-hearted tribes member, Jason, sending us some uh, frozen vittles from FedEx, and I've got some food on the grill, so I need to make this one a very short one here on this spectacularly gorgeous. It is a, is it Tuesday or Wednesday? We are now at August 4th, 2021. I have no clue if it's Tuesday or Wednesday right now, but we're going to go over once again to, uh, for today's short and sweet chronicle of the collapse, we're going to go over to the fine website Undenial by our fellow Doomer, and I think he's a subscriber here at Collapse Chronicles, Rob Milkarski. And he gets right to the point. Rob gets right to the point with his uh, post this week, Descending into Madness. Descending into Madness. All right, we have our frozen vittles which we will open here in a minute. Take it away, Rob. I think our society is going mad because there are so many overshoot-related problems converging at once that our inherited denial mechanism is overloaded. With no leaders who understand what is going on, few experts willing to speak publicly, and no honest discussion about what is happening nor what we should do. I expect something will snap soon in a bad way. Symptoms I see include we talk about everything except what matters. For example, our climate has shifted a gear and peak oil is behind us Yet, there is zero discussion about food security or the need for population reduction. We have polarized into tribes that are unable to contemplate or respect or discuss the beliefs of another tribe. We attack or ignore opponents rather than engage in respectful debate. We have always tended to do this, but it is getting worse. Next, facts are irrelevant to beliefs. When facts are unsure or, un or complex, we are unable to admit uncertainty. While common throughout history, this phenomenon is getting worse and is now pervasive in our intellectual leaders. Next, we are totally dependent for everything we need to survive from other countries that we now view as our enemies, yet we never discuss the need for more resilience. Next, we embrace solutions that have zero probability of improving a problem. Think the Green New Deal. Yes, zero probability of improving a problem. Thank you, Rob. Our response to problems often worsens the outcome. For example, printing trillions of dollars to further inflate a bubble that when it pops will do additional damage to that which we are trying to protect. And finally, we embrace leaders who created a problem to fix a problem and there are no longer consequences for illegal or unethical behavior. Think 
This new video has many useful insights despite the producers not being aware of Varky's mind over reality transition theory. And so he is uh, offering a new video called Mass Psychosis, How an Entire Population Becomes Mentally Ill. I guess this is quoting from the video, a mass psychosis is an epidemic of madness and it occurs when a large portion of the society loses touch with reality and descends into delusions. Totalitarianism is the greatest threat. But I'm going to have to go uh, catch that later because I think I need to flip over some uh, some pork chops and chicken tenders on our brand new, well, our used gas grill from uh, Habitat for Humanity. Man, look at that factory farm. Food on our new, brand new, better used gas grill. Oh no, the chicken tenders are sticking. Alright, but we're gonna see what Brother Jason has about our kind-hearted tribes member. Brother Jason has sent us here at Bugs in a Jar Farm This is from Fleetman's in Coney Island. I wonder if we're getting some Coney Island hot dogs. Okay, and I do appreciate it, Brother Jason. See if this, we can throw some of these on the grill. Fleetman's. Good Lord. We have to dig through our layers of packaging. I really appreciate my tribes members taking care of us here at Bugs in a Jar. We hope to see Jason up here in a couple of weeks. He's trying to make it up. All right! I have never had Coney Island hot dogs. That good lord. We have no shortage of them with some Fleetman hot dog mustard. Now, uh-oh. Uh well, Jason, you're putting me in a difficult position, brother. Uh, you know I do not eat beef, but uh, I guess the cow is dead, and it is like being at Coney Island here. So uh, I guess I will make a a uh, a departure. I'm gonna have some beef hot dogs. I have not had a beef hot dog in about ten years. So uh, actually, Jason, we're gonna hold these till your trip up here, and we're gonna cook some beef hot dogs as I. Uh, fall off the, what's it called? I can't remember what they say, the bandwagon. Anyway, man, they do look good. But I gotta go, since I don't eat beef, I gotta go tend to my pork chops. My guys.